Come on, can't you make him go any faster? Yeah, but I've got to stick with Dog Biscuit. You know, Tex, I was just a thinking. With all of the nice, soft hay that I feed this horse, I can't understand why he's so hard. <laughs> Say, Tex, can't you call this thing off? No, 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 Gloomy. I'm going through with it. All right. But you're jumping into a barrel of wildcats without even an introduction. And I'm warning you, Tex, if I get killed, I'll never forgive you as long as I live. Quarantine, Mr. Weiss. Poof in mouth. Come on, Gloomy. What? Ride again? Not yet, dog biscuit. Now. Sheriff of Sundown, I'm putting this place on the quarantine. Regardless of all that, you're under quarantine. Rocket, I'll have you out of office for this. It's a trick to keep us from shipping. You'd better remove that quarantine. It'll have to stand, Mr. Carter. I'll call a meeting of the ranchers. We'll see about this. Right out, notify everyone we'll meet here at four this afternoon. Hurry. Get Carter's barn at four o'clock. Get Carter's barn at four o'clock. We'll be there. There's a meet in Carter's barn at four o'clock. Well, only two more outfits, and our job is filled with this quarantine. If you do, it'll break every outfit in the valley. It stands. Now, if a single head of infected stock got into another herd, they'd all go down. Takes you making a target out of your back right where your suspenders cross. <laughs> well, that's a chance I'll have to take, Gloomy. And if any of these outfits move a single head, I'll impound them. You hop over to Prunella Wallabies and quarantine her place. Oh, Tex, please don't ask me to go over there. Now, what is it this time? Oh, well, just because I forgot to remember her birthday, she threw a horseshoe at me. <laughs> well, she'll get over that. Anyway, horseshoes are good luck. Now get going. Oh, Tex, any place but there. Well, you've got to go out there and get your fiddle anyhow, haven't you? Well, as bad as I want it, I'm scared to go after it. Are you going or not? All right. But I'll just holler at her and duck. Well, I've got to go to the office and do a little work. Then I'm going to ride out to the Davis place. See you tonight, Gloomy. Give Miss Davis high regards. Dog Biscuit, you know where we're going, don't you? Well, just don't leave me flat. Oh, oh. Just wait one minute now. Let me get fixed here. Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Oh, get excited. Hey! Hello, Mr. Cutler. Marco. Hi, Nick. How are you? I've been expecting you, Marco. Sit down. Nick? How much is Jake Dulac's ranch worth, land, stock, and household? Why, then? Well, Jake's wife's sick. We ain't got to have cash. How many cattle have they got? Mm, conservatively, 1,500. Good. 
He wants twenty-five hundred dollars. I'll give him a thousand. Give that to Jake. Yes, sir. Well, son, that just about clinches it. Jake's is the last ranch in this valley to borrow money from me. Pretty soon I'll have it all in the palm of my hand. The best cattle country in the Southwest. With this drought on, the ranchers are ready to market their beef in spite of taking us, knowing they must meet your loans on time. When this hoof and mouth discovered, that'll stop them. You've done good work, Farco. Only what a good lawyer should do, Mr. Cutler. Hmm. Do you have any trouble with Tex Rocket? He didn't know I was in Prescott. He had the cattle administrator's office all set for a loan. But I killed it. If Tex ever gets the ranchers government money at 4% on long term, I'm licked. Don't worry. He won't. It's worked, Mr. Cutler. The hoof and mouth has been discovered by no one else but Tex Rocket. That's good. He's quarantined in every outfit in the valley. It's working better than your plan, Dad. Carter's called the meeting of the cattlemen. They decided to ship regardless of Texas order. Get out there and see that they don't. You bet. Mr. Davis, if we're going to ship cattle, now's the time. Let's not frighten too easily, Prado. Tex will have some word for us today. Well, I certainly hope so. She says no. She's pinning all her hopes on Sheriff Tex Rocket. She's sure sweet on him. Sis, will you stop being stubborn and let me ship some of our beef stock? Not until Tex gets back. No, Tex, that's all I hear. Sis, you're in love with him. You're being very silly when we... Well, it's true. We're losing everything now because of your stubbornness. Our water supply is practically gone. Oh, have hope. Maybe by tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, hope. Words of fools and lawmen. Sis, we can't hold out much longer. We'll wait. Tex is just trying to run the show like he always does. He tried for aid and failed. Sis, we've got to run cattle on this high market, e even if we do take a weight loss. Not until I hear from Tex. Oh, you'd think that sheriff ran our lives. I don't get it when there's Nick Cutler. He likes you and he's, he's been mighty white to us getting extension on our loan, and, sis, if you'd tie up with him, we I know, we could have the wing be clear. We wouldn't have to worry about the rain. We wouldn't have to worry about fighting this drought to a standstill. No. Steve. Ooh. Carter's called a meeting to his barn, wants us all to be there. We'll... You failed? I was called to Prescott, told the government would help. I got there and found aid withdrawn. Don't look so worried. Everyone in the valley appreciates what you're doing. I'm afraid they don't. But is your brother here? Oh, he just rode off. He should be back shortly. Tex, we'll just have to ship our cattle now to pay our debts. That'll be, I'm afraid, maybe you better wait. I... Can I make you some coffee and muffins? All right. Under one condition. What's that? That you let me dump the muffins. Uh-huh. <laughs> we strung along with Tex Rocket as long as we should. Waiting for him to get us that government loan. And it ain't coming. With beef price high, the drought comes along and they shed their weight like water. We put faith in Rocket in getting us that low interest loan. And he failed. Then what does he do? To be sure we can ship our stock, along he comes and quarantines us. We ain't been quarantined yet, and we can drive our people. I'm done with Sheriff Rocket. We've all got to meet our loans due Silas Cutler, or he'll own this lock, stock, and barrel. Wait a, Wait a minute. There's no use losing your heads. No condition so bad it couldn't be worse. I'm sure Tex Rocket knows what he's doing. Remember, he represents the law, and we must not break it. I'll
the idea of that quarantine. Now look here, Penella. This is all a part of my job, nothing personal, you see? You, the sheriff, nor the whole state can't quarantine Prunella Wallaby. Now don't get excited, Prunella. You only have eight milk cows, so this won't affect you, my dear. Don't you, my dear me. What won't affect me? The hoof and mouth disease? I'll say it won't, you disappointed octopus. Oh, won't you listen, Penella? As deputy sheriff, it's my duty. Now you get out of here. Psst, scat! Oh, but you don't understand, Penella. Uh, what am I going to tell, uh, thanks, I mean, the guy... Badger. His name's Tex. Oh, isn't it? Well, well, I guess he favors me a little at that. <laughs> Here, Steve. wants to see you about something. Yeah? What? Quarantine, eh? Do you think the ranchers are gonna stand for this? They'll have to. It's the only way to protect them. I found several brands infected, including that of your neighbor, Carter. You can't get away with this, Tex. Take it back. Well, I... Uh, I'm sorry you take it that way, Steve. That's it. Mount up, boys. We're cutting our brand from Carter's stock and running up to market and taking the weight loss now. No stock moves. We'll move them, Rocket. That's our prime beef. And I'll run them to town and still. You stubborn fool. Don't you know that if you move a single head that's infected, you'll wipe out everything? I'm running this ranch from now on, Tex. My sister isn't capable. Go back to nursing town drunks. Your jurisdiction ends at our property line. Steve. I told you that no stock moves. Next. 
Steve's so crazy with worry, he doesn't know what he's doing. But he'll be careful to cut out any infected head. There's no way of telling. They can be infected 30 hours before it shows. If he moves a single head, I've but one recourse. Impound them all. Tex, you wouldn't get back at him by ruining us all. I can't let him endanger the whole valley. Steve was wrong when he said my jurisdiction ended at your property line. It begins there. You're not stopping to think. If you let us get a hundred head through, we'll be able to pay Silas Cutler on our note. At a time like this, people, dream, hopes don't count. I have my oath and my badge to think of. Badge? It's more your stubbornness and pride. You're proud of your power, Tex Rocket, and acting like a fool because Steve lost his head. Steve doesn't matter. He does matter, because he won't let you beat him. It's a personal grudge between you two. You've set yourself up as judge and gun gospel of my brother. I'm trying to do what I think best for all. Hello, Tex. Howdy. While you're out prodding the boys for the money they owe your father, you might tell them that the valley is under strict quarantine for hoof and mouth. So I heard. That's too bad. Worse than that, I didn't get the government aid. I think that just about bankrupts every one of them. You know it does. That'll be news to Dad. It'll please him. I was just talking to Tex. It's too bad about the quarantine. Your father couldn't have ordered it more perfectly. Bankers can't control weather or disease. Now don't you worry. You just say the word and I'll see you safely through this. Both you and Steve. Well, I'll even run Tex Rocket out of the country for you. Please, Nick. Oh. I thought after today he wouldn't mean anything to you. Well. If you ever need me, you'll know where to look. If you're planning to round up and move some stock, Rip, don't. Tex, you don't seem to realize what you're doing. No stock moves. I'd be ruined. We've got to think of the whole valley. I'll find some way to help the ranchers. With government aid, I suppose. Like you promised. Well, the whole valley's sick of waiting for you. Somebody's holding up that aid. I'll find out who it is. I'll need you boys as deputies to help me stop Steve. Raise your right hand. Not us. You go on your own bullheaded way, and I hope Steve gets away with it. Everything I said goes, Carter. money back. Don't try to buy any more cattle in this valley while the quarantine is on. I warned you, Steve. I'll have to impound the cattle. And you've gone too far, Ten Badge. Oh! 
I didn't want to do it, Steve, but you made me. Just in case you need them. Thanks, Billy. You're acting too high and mighty. I'm standing pat. Touch any of those cattle in the pens and these irons might get hot. Ooh. Davis, I'm putting you under arrest for violating quarantine. Give me a hand, Gloom. Hold us a minute, fella. Hey, did you break his jaw? No, he's all right. That's too bad. Stand back. You too. Texas played right in our hands. He's arrested Davis. The whole valley's for tearing down the jail and riding Tex out of town on a post. Well, get out and work on that crowd. They'll get Tex and we won't be implicated. Miss B, Steve's been thrown in jail. Jail? For what? For violating quarantine. Tex caught us flat-footed and beat Steve up. The whole town is roaring mad. Thought you'd like to be there and tie down the jail. Get my horse. Well, Tex, you've done it this time. There's more people out there than I ever saw in an ice cream social. And brother, they ain't looking for ice cream. And there's more coming. Steve wants a drink of water. You've come far enough. Release Davis and nothing will happen. I'd advise you men to break up. Go home. You can't do this to Davis or the rest of the valley. My stock's gonna move too. What are we waiting for? Let's take it. I've always considered you men my friends. I'd hate to have to shoot you. Please, wait a minute. Let me handle this, Mr. Carter. We're behind you, Miss Davis. But remember, we're fighting for your brother. Let the boys take him. No, Nick, there's trouble enough. I'll talk to Tex. I want my brother released immediately. If I did that, I'd have to turn in my badge. Steve saw fit to ignore my orders. He'll stand trial in the morning. That means he might go to prison. The law's the law. Plays no favorites. Law. Favorites. You're drunk with stubbornness. You're throwing every square mile of Sundown Valley into the hands of Silas Cutler. Circumstance over which I have no control. Bankers are like droughts, diseases. They wait for no man. I still have hopes of getting government aid. Steve once said hope was a word for fools and lawmen. He's right. What's my brother's bail? Go home, B. You're letting this thing panic you like it has all the rest. If I let Steve out now, cattle will move. You mean no bail? No bail. But keeping everybody's mind on Steve, they're not likely to run cattle, spread infection to another part of the range. You're making an example of Steve. He willfully broke a law. You'll be sorry for what you've done. I'm sorry I had to do it. Say the 
word, Miss Davis. He's holding Steve for trial in the morning. I'm for tar and feathers. Oh, no, there must be some other way. There is. There's another way to beat his kind. Break him with the law. I'll have Steve plead not guilty. You men of sundown will sit on the jury. You can't sentence a man when the jury says he's not guilty. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. See? Thank you, Nick. Whoever sits jury brings in a verdict of not guilty. I get it. But Steve will need a lawyer. I'll arrange for Mr. Varco, Dad's attorney, to represent him. Everything will be all right. You know, Tex, I don't like the way that mob acts. When a pack of wolves quit stalking one thing, it's a sure sign they're after bigger game. Or planning to attack that same game from a different angle. You mean they've got something up their sleeves? Well, I don't... Do you happen to be Sheriff Tex Rocket? Yes, sir, I'm the sheriff. My name's Brett Stockton from Prescott. Well, the cattle administrator. That's right. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Stockton. I, I've been in your office many times. Yes, I know. I'm sorry we never met. Uh, this is my deputy, Gloomy Day. How do you uh, do, Mr. Day? Glad to meet you. I come at your request to investigate conditions the drought I'm aware of, but this hoof and mouth, you ask for an inspection. I'll have a look whenever you're ready. Well, I have something I'd like for you to see. We can go tonight. All right. I have a double purpose here, Tex. But just what is your other purpose? I'm authorized to give financial aid if the situation warrants it. Well, that's fine. You can see for yourself, Mr. Stockton. You stay here, Gloomin. We won't be long. I know, but the mob, uh, you'll have to have somebody to show you where the cattle is, won't you? <laughs> oh, I think we'll be able to find the cattle all right. You guard Steve. If anybody tries to release him, you know what to do. Yeah. What? Don't go to sleep. Call me. Feel to be on the inside looking out. Get me out of here, Nick. Get me out. Tex figures to make an example of you. Prison for ten years, I'm afraid. Let me get my hands on him. He's quick with a gun, Steve. Get me out of here and I'll show you how quick I am. And maybe you'll need this. Thanks, Nick. I won't forget it. Take it easy. And if you need a hideout, come to my place. And remember, a dead sheriff can't testify against you. I certainly hope everything comes out all right. Don't worry, B. It's simply that Tex has showed his true colors, just as I knew he would. Authority has gone to his head. He's not fit to be sheriff in a crisis like this. I'll do more than just let you have our lawyer. I'll toss Tex's badge right in your lap on one condition. That was your reason for offering to help Steve. Let's forget it. I wasn't thinking of Steve, B. Me. I'll get along all right without your help. The ranchers won't let me down. They'll acquit Steve. Yeah. 
I might order extensions on their loans if the ranchers return a verdict of guilty. You wouldn't dare. Men are funny when they're pressed, B. Those ranchers would do most anything to save their land and families. Think it over. Nick, have you seen Steve? It's all set. He'll come here after he gets Tex. The boys are waiting. I'll tend to it. Funny. Looks like Nick Cutler and his men. I wonder what they could be doing. Well, I don't know, but let's find out. Something wrong here, Tex. Yeah. Got the symptoms of advanced hoof and mouth disease. Maybe they're giving him medicine. Well, I may be wrong, but I don't think so. Let's turn him loose. Hey, Brad. Yeah? Paintbrush. Funny. Maybe doctor in the critters, like I said. We didn't dream it was this bad. You know, there's a fellow named Ben Varco said that... Ben Varco? Said what? Varco said the valley was just crying because of a little drought, that aid wasn't necessary. He said Silas Cutler was given all the financial help needed. So Cutler had Varco working against me. Stockton, Cutler has taken advantage of everybody in this valley. Short-term notes, High interest. He's about ready to call in those notes now. You get it? Well, that's as bad as murder. Taking a man's home away from him during a crisis. Well, that's what he's doing. The hoof and mouth disease has played right into his hands. I had no alternative but to help him by slapping on the quarantine. I'm authorized to give help for the drought if needed, but I don't know whether I can swing enough to get the ranchers out of this too. I wish I could. Say, my hand's burning. I know what this is. What? Burns. Fumes. You think then there's no hoof and mouth disease in the valley? You're right. I see that now. Come on. Here he is. Sound asleep in the middle of trouble, just like you said. 
What happened, Gloomy? What happened? There was a hundred of them, Tex. I fought them. One down, another down, and then another down. So I was getting the best of them. So they rushed me on horses, and I grabbed a horse in that hand, and I grabbed another horse in that hand, and I threw it. Now tell me the truth. What really happened? Well, Steve jabbed a gun at my head, and I don't know how he got out or where he got the gun. Well, I could guess if I had time. Right now, I don't want a word about this to anyone. Well, ain't we going after him? Our best bet is to let court convene tomorrow. Yeah. Let everything come off as planned. Let them walk into their own trap. That's right. We'll meet here in the morning. Right. In the meantime, I better send in some reports. Good night. Good night, Mr. Stark. And what do we do? Oh, just sort of keep out of sight. See, Gloomy, when a man keeps out of sight, he's very apt to keep out of trouble. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, so I thought maybe we'd ride out and uh, visit Miss Prunella this evening. Gosh, man, you're looking for trouble now. Listen, Tex. She'll shoot you on sight. There's no chance to talk sense to her or even talk to her. She's just an honorary critter. Tex, I'm telling you. Good evening, Mr. Sheriff. I'm so glad to see you. I'll be right out. Boy, you sure cast a magic spell over her. What is it you got that thou right? <laughs> well, I don't know, Gloomy. It must be my curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You just don't understand that sweet, gentle lady. Who, me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, Miss Prunella. I was going out tonight, but since you placed me under quarantine, well, it's night called. You know, Mr. Tex, or may I call you Tex? Oh, you most certainly can, Miss Prunella. It's Prunella, <laughs> Tex. <laughs> I'll take chocolate, Tex. You took the very words right out of my mouth. Chocolate it is. I'll have it in a jiffy. It was sweet of you to call. You know, a little girl gets very lonesome out here. Alone. Tex. <laughs> I'm warning you, Tex, she'll strike. Came here to square you, Gloomy. Oh, don't mind me. I'd rather have her for an enemy. Please play some Passing him by, but he don't know why He done the best he could You let me think your hand I'd won I hope you've had your fun How can you break my heart When right from the start I've done the best I could at first, my life was one sweet song, then everything went wrong. Heaven knows you're no saint, but what if I ain't? I've done the best I could. Though you may never share his tears, he'll love you through the years. When his time's up someday, with his last breath he'll say, I've done the best I couldn't. Tex ain't in town. I tell you, he's gone. That's strange. Maybe Steve Davis met up with him. Hmm? Silas, I just saw Brett Stockton. What's he doing here? It can mean only one thing. Government aid. But I thought you said you had it fixed so that aid wouldn't be given. So I did. I can't figure it out. Well, we'll take care of that when court convenes. Now, I want you to demand in the name of the citizens that Tex Rocket be dismissed from the sheriff's office. Dad, I'll wait at the bank in case Steve shows up.
Judge Pritchard did very well last year. Besides his salary as judge, he cleaned up in the undertaking business. Yeah. Howdy, Judge. Howdy, howdy. Judge uh, Pritchard, this is Silas Cutler. Oh, yeah, heard of you. Banker. Yeah, hot day, hot day. Very hot. Must be kind of hard on you, Judge, traveling all over the country, administering the law, here today and gone tomorrow. Yes, you're right, you're right. It is hard on me. Yesterday I hanged a man in Senko. The day before I gave one life in Yuma. Well, that's hard on you, Judge. Yeah, hard on them, too. Well, let's get court in session. Morning, Hank. Morning, morning. Say, Hank, I think you'd better tie Josephine over with the horses. No, Josephine's a little particular. She likes to be alone, likes to be alone. Oh. <laughs> See, you're still carrying your donut. Yep. Saves a lot of wear and tear. Saves a lot of wear and tear. Uh, well, it's a good thing you're not riding Josephine. You'd have to carry two of them. Have to carry two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, sit down. Have you been sworn in as bailiff? Sure have, Hank. Huh? Uh, I mean, uh, judge. Then proceed as usual, as usual. This is the Fifth District Court of the Territory of Arizona. With the Honorable Judge Pritchard presiding. Court is now in session. The People versus Steve Davis. Complaint signed by Sheriff Tex Rocket. Ready for trial? Ready for trial? If it please, Your Honor. I ask for a dismissal of the charges against the defendant, Steve Davis. And as a citizen of the county, I ask the removal of Tex Rocket from the office of Sheriff. Well, of all the nerve, Mr. Tex is a fine sheriff. Sit down, Penella. Sheriff Tex Rocket? What have you to say for yourself? Well, both the plaintiff and the sheriff are missing. This is most irregular. Where in the world is Tex? You got me, you rode away for a son up. So there's nothing to do except call the case off, call the case off. Your Honor, please. Apologies to the court. I was detained on business pertaining to this case. Uh, may we proceed? Well, it's most irregular, Sheriff Rocket. Most irregular. Attorney for the defendant asked for dismissal. But the case will be tried. The case will be tried. As long as the attorney for the defendant asks for dismissal of the case, that's exactly my request. Your Honor, I'd like to withdraw my charges against Steve Davis. He's bluffing. And instead, I'd like to file complaints against Silas Cutler, Nick Cutler, Ben Varco, and all men in their employ. Another demonstration like that, and I'll clear the court. Sheriff Rocket, explain yourself. Yes, that explain yourself. Yes, explain yourself. Your Honor, if this sheriff intends to make sport of the law, I want him held in contempt. Contempt? Contempt is what everyone in this valley holds for you, Mr. Cutler. You tried to get their land without caring how. The drought played right into your hands, but you couldn't let well enough alone. You tried to gather up all the loose ends, but there were too many ends to handle. Some of them slipped through your fingers. I'm holding the reins now, Cutler. Your Honor, these men are under the law. You're holding nothing. You're making this grandstand play because you're beat. Hurling these charges at us. Ridiculous. He's stalling because his prisoners escaped. Your Honor, 
I demand that the sheriff be held for malfeasance of office. You can't demand anything. You're under arrest. You'll have to be more specific with your accusations, Sheriff, and produce your evidence. May I call my witnesses? Proceed, proceed. Miss Davis, take the stand, please. This looks bad. Where is Steve Davis? Don't worry. Leave this to me. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not but the truth? I do. Go ahead, Hank. Miss Davis, you borrowed money from Mr. Cutler at 12% interest? Yes, I did. That's illegal, Your Honor. Why, it's murder. Uh, uh, proceed, proceed. You wish to sell your cattle to meet this loan, right? Yes. When I discovered an epidemic, placed your ranch under quarantine, your brother tried to sell against my orders. I put him in jail. Now, you saw Mr. Cutler and his son after that, didn't you? Yes. What'd they say? Tell the court, please. Tell the court. Nick said because all the ranchers owed money, he could get a jury to free Steve if... If what? Well, he said I was the only one that meant anything to him. He was going to break the other ranches, you too. It's all, Miss Davis. Mr. Stockton, take the stand, please. Your name, please. Brett Stockton. Business? Cattle inspector for the United States government. Mr. Stockton, did I go to your office and try to obtain money at honest, reasonable rates of interest for the ventures of sundown? You did, then my men refused it. Why, please? I was informed it wasn't needed. You were informed by whom? Mr. Cutler's attorney, Ben Varco. <laughs> got to do something. We're being hogtied. As evidence, you have a paintbrush? Yes, sir. You were an eyewitness as to how it was used? Yes, sir. Your Honor, most of the bristles on this brush have been eaten away by acid. You see, there is no ethnic among your... to keep you from selling your cattle, to pay back the loans, wanting to own this valley for themselves, the cutlers have been painting the mouths of the stock with acid. It produced the desired effect. Order up! Clear the court! Clear the court! your dad and they're coming for you.
Oh, Judge, it was so gallant of you to rescue me. Where did you come from? East Texas. You made good time. You made good time. Steve. It's nothing, Fifth. We were all wrong. Tex is on our side. Well, I sure made a sap of myself. How do we stand now, Tex? <laughs> Let's forget it, Steve. It's all right. Gloomy, you take him over to Doc Pardee's. How do we stand? Shall I forget it, Lou? Not unless you want to be charged with misrepresentation. You won your case, Sheriff. 